Coming up on Mountain News this morning, Kentucky State Police prepare to host food drives across the Commonwealth. And troopers here in Hazard help make the Christmas season a bit more merry for kids in our region. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good Friday morning to you at 631. I'm Dakota Makris and just think when we all get off work, it's the weekend and evidently Brandon, I think I missed the Christmas tie um, memo mm -hmm. walked in this morning. You're wearing a Christmas tie and a viewer messaged me and said I also should be wearing a Christmas tie. It's Christmas tie Friday. I remember well, I said that a couple of weeks. Actually, I said it last week after probably on Black did. Friday that every Friday until Christmas which Christmas Eve is on a Friday, well, too. Well, you know, you so could have texted me, sent me a reminder. Well, I, I could have worn a red tie, perhaps. That's true. That is, I could have I done that, I, and I'm sorry I didn't. It's okay. I've been looking. I'll, I'll order some Christmas ties. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's a good deal. Hopefully, they'll get here in time. Let's take a look and see what's going on across our region this morning. Up on top of Whitesburg Pine Mountain, no major issues. I was up there kind of driving around yesterday. Beautiful scene up there on top of the mountain. Looking at uh, temperatures this morning, 30s and 40s, so not a whole lot of warmth to be had yet. But later today, we're going to soar into the upper 60s for daytime highs. Lots of sunshine, maybe a few clouds tonight. Not too bad overall as we drop to right around 50 degrees for a low. Dakota? All right, Brendan, thank you so much. Well, deputies in Pulaski County are investigating after skeletal remains were found yesterday. A search for a missing person in the Mount Zion area led to the discovery. And police say the evidence nearer, the evidence remains led them to believe it is Roy Chumley, who was reported missing in October. The remains were sent to the state medical examiner's office. Now, if you have any information about this, you can call the Pulaski County Sheriff's Office at 606-678-5145. You can also leave an anonymous tip at the office webpage. Kentucky State Police are investigating threats at Bell County High School. Police say a 16-year-old boy made verbal threats to other students on Wednesday which were reported to staff members at the school. The boy was suspended from the school on the same day the threats were reported. He was arrested in Middlesboro and charged with terroristic threatening. He is being held at the Breathitt County Juvenile Detention Center. One investigation into the burglary of a barn over in Wayne County has led to a second arrest. Now the burglary took place near the end of October at a barn on Lewis Kelly Road near Torrenceville. Several tools and electrical equipment was taken. On November 9th, deputies arrested Raymond Reynolds and got an arrest warrant for Jeremiah J. Hall. And yesterday, a truck was pulled over on Kentucky 3106 and the driver was identified as Hall. Police also found a set of digital scales and meth in the truck. He was taken to the Wayne County Detention Center. Well, the support dog that was reported stolen, we've been following this story in Wayne County, has been found. Owners say someone found the dog named Oakley outside of their home. Now, they do not know who took the dog, but the family is happy she is finally back home. Well, throughout the pandemic, we've seen demand for new and used cars soar. That's increasing the value of all cars. Now, when the value goes up, state transportation leaders say so do your taxes. Kristen Kennedy has a warning for all drivers ahead of the new year and investigates the climbing car taxes. If our two certainties in life are death and taxes, we're about to send one of those into overdrive. Well, there's a real domino effect from the shortage of new cars. I see cars executive analyst Carl Brower is talking about a lack of supply, creating a larger demand, leading to a rise in value and ending with a higher car tax. Now you see things like, you know, a Toyota Corolla or a GMC Terrain or a Toyota RAV4. These vehicles have all gone up in, in between like 29 and 33 percent in the last year, just since uh, last August. Those, Brower says, are some of the makes and models that are worth much more than this time last year. In turn, those drivers are going to be paying more on their personal property taxes. Do you expect this to be a little bit of a sticker shock for some Kentuckians? I mean, it's a 30 percent increase on 45 cents for every hundred dollars, so I don't think it's going to be massive depending on which kind of car you own. Uh, but I think most people will be surprised because normally cars lose value over time and your taxes go down every year, not up. According to Kentucky's Division of State Valuation, the average value for a car, and we're talking an average for all new and used cars on the roads, increases 3 to 4 percent each year. Last year, the average value was up 11 percent. 
The Commonwealth doesn't come up with those numbers on their own. They pay a third party to put a value on your vehicle. Our Commonwealth Office of Technology runs a program that takes that file from J.D. Power and matches it up against their data with our VIN. So it's matching up against a VIN and it, get, it puts in the trade-in value for the value as of January 1st. Division Director Kathy Thompson says car owners can dispute their vehicle's personal property tax. If it's been wrecked, it's been damaged, it has high miles, they can go to the PVA to re provide documentation to justify why their vehicle does not uh, meet the value that is uh, been applied. But it's going to be hard to fight if you're just arguing value based on the current market. And when you can't go get a new car that you want, you keep your existing car, which causes a lack of used cars in the marketplace. So we're seeing these two things come together in a lack of new and used cars, and the prices for both have shot up. In Lexington, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. State valuation leaders won't pull new numbers from J.D. Power until the first of the year, and they're not making any guesses on the average value next year. Well, if you're looking to get your Christmas gifts on time, well, you just might be out of luck. It's not looking like Santa will meet the deadline for some. Staffing shortages at the Troy Post Office in Virginia is leading to severe mail delays. Politicians have been pushing the USPS Virginia district manager during the past few months. I asked them, could we come pick up their mail? And they said no, because uh, if they didn't have the people to deliver it, they don't have the people to sort it. Senator Mark Warner is calling for more job fairs and plans for a holiday surge. Representative Abigail Spartanberger is relaunching a survey focused on mail delays, but for now, the problem persists. Troopers across the state are reminding everyone about the Cram the Cruiser event at the Hazard Walmart this Saturday from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. The community is invited to donate non-perishable food items for the cause. The event Ser ser serves to help families less fortunate get food during the holidays. Trooper Matt Gayhart says events like this are important for the season. All the food that's donated and collected stays right here in our communities. Uh, so it will be donated back to uh, people in need right here in our post district. So we're affecting the people that, that are neighbors, essentially. Now Trooper Gayhart adds that they are also accepting donations at post 13 this week. Kentucky State Police Post 13 finished its two-day Shop with the Trooper event yesterday. Our Chaz Jenkins has more from the Hazard Walmart and explains how troopers helped make the Christmas season for kids in our region a bit more merry. A holiday tradition. As state troopers help bring gifts to kids in need. Last year, due to the COVID restrictions, we had to do the shopping and take it to them, and we missed seeing those smiles on those faces. So it's really nice to have those children shopping back in the store with us today. Seeing people with JROTC from Perry County Central High School help volunteer. Our program is a community-based program, so this is an opportunity for the kids to go out and give something back to the community that supports them. Uh, so when they, uh, we got the phone call, we took advantage of the situation. Giving members of their organization a chance to serve the region. Because on the college application, they're always asked, well, how much community service do you have? And this is an opportunity for them to get, gain some of those hours for their college applications. Thinking of ways to simplify future events. There's always some improvements that we can make and uh, more children that we can impact. So the goal is uh, to try to step that up as much as possible. And that's what we plan to do. An event troopers believe is important for the season. Anytime we can give back, that's what we should be doing. Uh, that should be our main focus and our main goal. Uh, so in this program, it's one way that we can give back to those kids. Bringing the Christmas spirit to those less fortunate. In Hazard, Chaz Jenkins, WYMT Mountain News. Now, Trooper Gayhart says he wants to thank the community and everyone else involved, adding the event could not have been happened without them. Well, the voice of the Kentucky Wildcats and a Kentucky All-American will make a stop right here in Hazard today. Tom Leach and Mike Pratt will be at the Red Spotted Newt from 4 until 6 p.m. for a signing of their new book, Kentucky Basketball, Two Decades Behind the Scenes. Now, Leach posted the news on his Facebook page earlier this week. He said in the post, this will be the first in a series of signings on their tour. Now, if you miss them here in Hazard, they will also be in Lexington on Saturday and Sunday.
640 here on this Friday morning and temperatures continue to fall in some areas. Prestonsburg just changed to 45. Jackson and Pikeville now tying at 49 for the warmest spot in the region. Looks like uh, Monticello is trying to give Jones a little competition there at 35 and 34 respectively. Out the door forecast today, we are going to see temperatures climb quickly as the sunshine comes down. I think we see mid to upper 60s and maybe even close to 70 as we get later into the day. Dakota. All right, Brandon, thank you so much. The time is now almost 641. Still to come here on Mountain News this morning. Some new data shows a possible relationship between the state's voting record and the impact COVID-19 on its people.